Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the noise of today's world? Unsure of which voice to trust or what decision to make? What if the solution isn't about knowing what to think, but learning how to think? Biblically, that is. In this podcast series, I am going to show you exactly how to break free from the pressure to conform and instead to build a mindset grounded in the timeless wisdom of Scripture. What's up, everybody? It's Ryan James Miller, and I want to welcome you to my newest podcast series, The Modern Man's Guide to Biblical Wisdom. This is part of Unlocking Greatness, but this series specifically is designed to help you navigate the complexities of modern life by thinking critically and living boldly in line with biblical principles. In today's crazy, chaotic, and fast-paced world, it is so easy to feel like you are getting pulled, and I am getting pulled, in every single direction. We're being overwhelmed by conflicting opinions and unsure of how to lead with purpose. That's why this series is not designed to tell you what to think. It's about equipping you with the wisdom to learn how to think. And the wisdom that will teach you that better than anything is Scripture. We're going to explore timeless truths throughout scripture about how to be a better man, a better husband, a better father, and a better leader. Over the course of this series, we're going to tackle so many different things like finding true success, overcoming fear and doubt, balancing work and family, and building resilience in the face of adversity. Each episode over the next couple of weeks is going to help offer you the practical steps to apply biblical wisdom to the real world challenges you are facing every single day. Look at this is not just about information. This is about transformation. We don't just want to learn. We want to grow. We want to change. We want to transform. We're going to unpack what it means to live biblically, purposefully, and in pursuit of the life that God has called you and I to live. So, Hopefully you're ready to get started. I want to walk you through this first episode titled How Not What to Think. Hopefully you're ready because I'm fired up if you can't tell already. Look at in today's world, we are faced with so many incredible challenges, particularly as men. And I know that's going to get a lot of people ruffled up in the panties, but it just is what it is. We have so many conflicting voices from culture telling us that we're too toxic, that we're not strong enough, that we're being weak, that we're being too strong. It's just, it's chaotic. Nobody, some people don't even know what a man is anymore. And that's coming from media. That's coming from society. That's coming from some of our own circles. It makes living as a man extremely difficult today. Look at, it is so important that particularly in the face of chaos, that we know what we have been called to do, that we know who has called us to live the life that we have been called to live. This is why having a biblical mindset is so incredibly important. The word of God is truth. It is perfect without error. It gives us exactly what we need to live a fulfilled life. It informs us on every single area of the life that we are being called to live. Is it going to give you every answer to every question you have in this life? Absolutely not. But it is going to give you clarity as to how to think about the things that you are being called to lean into in the life that you're living for the first 28 years of my life. But really, you know, in in the, from probably 22 to 28, man, I thought I had it all together. I was financially fairly successful. I was making good money, owned a home, drove a nice car, married a beautiful woman, had a young child. I mean, like I was dialed. I was in decent shape, I guess. Actually, I was probably in worse shape than I, than I want to give myself credit for. But overall, Like, I thought my life was good. I thought things were dialed in. But I had no truth perspective on life. Every single decision I made, every approach was all based upon my own personal experience, my gathered wisdom, and that of the people around me. And dangerous. It was disastrous. And that's not to say that there were not people in my life 
that weren't giving me good guidance, that weren't giving me good wisdom, but I wasn't listening to those. I was listening, listening to the things that I wanted to hear. I was listening to the narrative that supported the lifestyle I chose to live. I mean, something as basic as, you know, a good man goes to work to provide for his family. And I believed that I was going to work 10, 12, 14 hours a day, staying out late with clients, traveling, whatever, that I was doing that to provide for my family. And there was some truth to that, but I was doing that for me. I was doing that to benefit myself, to make more money, to be more successful, to be seen as something more than I was. When I faced adversity, I tried to fight through it. I tried to bulldoze my way through, literally physically fight out of some of it, yell my way out of things. It was a mess. It was such a mistake. And it caused me to be in unhealthy relationships, to have an unhealthy relationship with myself, to have an unhealthy relationship with money, with status, with success. I was drowning. And in many ways, I had no idea. Sure. I felt the symptoms, but I didn't understand what the root cause was, and I wasn't giving credit to what it actually was, which was a lack of God in my life, which was a lack of biblical guidance. I did not have the truth of God's word to inform how I got up out of bed every single day and how I went about my day. I was lacking in the greatest resource known to man. You know, some people think that, even Christians, that the Bible is a good tool, it's a good resource, it helps me to live a good Christian life, but I don't think that people give credit to just how powerful the Word of God is. There is nothing that the Bible doesn't inform. Again, it doesn't speak to every individual issue, but it informs on every single issue in this world. There are people that are trying today to say that the Bible is not relevant for our time, that that was for that time, this is for this time. I even hear Christians say, well, the Old Testament was for those pre-Christ and the New Testament are for those of us that are in Christ now. The Bible is for all people of all time. The Old Testament is all about Jesus pointing to his first coming. The New Testament is reflective of the life of Jesus, talking about the season of life that he walked this earth, the birth of the church, everything that they would experience. It's all relevant. It's all important to us today. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 uh, uh, speaks to the fact that all scripture is breathed out by God, and therefore it is profitable for every aspect of life for teaching, for reproof, for correction. I added in there that for every aspect of life. But Paul writing to his understudy, Timothy, is saying to him, yo, this word, the word of God, it's good for everything. Every good work you want to accomplish, every decision that you need to make, it's here. The truth is here. It is so incredibly important that we realize that the Bible wasn't just for then. Yes, it was written to a real group of people thousands of years ago. And it's contextual. So we can't take every single word literally. But we do have to understand that every word was literally for us. If we're going to take the Bible at its word, then we need to understand that we are required to live as Christians everywhere, in every aspect of life. It drives me nuts when I hear men say that they do their Christian thing on Sundays. They've got their professional life during the workday, and then at home they have their personal life. Do you realize that all of our life is integrated? And if you are in Christ, a new creation, You are a Christian at all times and in all places. There is not a single domain of your life. There is not a crack or a crevice that the word of God and and the Lord himself does not fill. Faith cannot be compartmentalized. Men, take 
that idea out of your head that the Bible, that the word of God, that your Christianity is for Sundays. It is for every day, every day. It's not just a guide either. It's an absolute. It's so important for us to believe that. Psalm 119, 105 speaks to the fact that scripture is meant to guide our path in every single circumstance. Again, the word speaks to our life. Our life is informed by the word of God. It shows you how to think. Sometimes it's definitely going to tell you what to think about Jesus. So many different commands about how to treat his people, how to operate in this world. But I think one thing that we struggle with often is we kind of check our minds at the door when it relates to our Christianity, when it relates to our faith. It's like we read it for what it is, we take what we want, and then we go about our day, our week, our month, our year, whatever. I think it's important that we recognize that it's time to start learning how to think about things. You can't just look for an answer what to think. You need to look for informing you on how to think about a situation, politics, your own faith, business, money, relationships, parenting, friendship. Too often we are blindly following advice because it's from somebody that we like or respect. It's not that we can't listen to people that we like and that we respect, but we need to have discernment. And the greatest resource of discernment, you got it already, it's the Word of God. Wisdom is what we need, not just information. Wisdom is about understanding a situation. It's about discerning a situation versus simply just following a path. It's not simply about just a black and white answer, though there are many black and white answers to have as it relates to Scripture. But we need to gain wisdom because you see, we're thrown into this world, particularly as men, and we're called to lead, we're called to provide, we're called to protect, we're called to serve, we're called to sacrifice, we're, we're, we're called to work hard, we're called to, to be husbands, we're called to be fathers, we're, we're called to be all these things. Where is the manual? There isn't one, but here's what there is. There is a God that has gifted us with his word that gives us the wisdom, understand and make appropriate decisions for the contexts that we are in. You wanna learn how to be a better husband or a father? Go read the word of God. Here's what's great. You don't have to just go to passages that talk about marriage or parenting. You can read his entire word. And that will help you to understand how to think about being a husband, how to think about being a father. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is a very well-known passage of Scripture, and it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not, on, uh, lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. Whose understanding then should we lean on? God's. God's wisdom. We have to constantly be going back to scripture. We have to constantly be going back to what the Bible says in order to discern and to navigate the life that we're living right now. We're in the midst of a heated, heated political climate in our country, United States. You should know how to vote based upon what the Bible teaches. Most, most people don't. Men, you want to lead well? You should be leading your family into the Word of God to understand what the Bible says about politics, what the Bible says about policy. It's not just about the person you're voting for, it's about the policies. How you school your children. Do you school them at home? Do you school them in public school? Do you school them in private school? The Word of God will inform that. It's not going to tell you to school them at home, school them privately, or school them publicly. But it is going to give you wisdom to make decisions based upon what God calls you to, what God calls your family. Scripture is not just a list of doing this and not doing that. 
It's about gaining wisdom and understanding. God's shaping your heart and my heart to help us better navigate the world. We're in trouble, men. We're in deep, deep trouble right now. Men have failed the society. Absolutely failed the society. We are failing in every aspect. We're not showing up for our wives and our kids. We're not showing up for our communities. We've lost in many ways the ability to be the good man that God calls us to because we have all but forgotten the word of God that teaches us how to do that. It's incredible when I think about um, scripture and I think about the men of God throughout scripture. And apart from Jesus, you cannot find a single perfect man in scripture because there isn't any that exist apart from Jesus. And yet you see these men that were faced with incredibly difficult decisions and somehow they navigated to make the right ones most of the time. You take a guy like David, like David was known for killing the giant, slaying that giant with a slingshot and a stone. And that decision he made was informed by the word of God. You're like, well, Ryan, it wasn't written then. It was imprinted on his heart. God had begun working in and through David at a very young age. And so when David was faced with an opportunity to stand up for his community as this little guy against this monster, he did it because he felt led to, because he felt that was what God was informing him to do. David didn't always make good decisions because if you've read your Bible, you know that David committed adultery. David also had the husband of the woman he committed adultery with killed. That was after the whole slingshot incident, by the way. And yet later on in life, God would affirm David as a man after his own heart. And I think to myself, like, how the heck did that even happen? Like, he committed adultery. He had somebody killed. Sure, he did some good things for God, but he did some bad, th really bad things, like things in society today that we really wouldn't forgive people for. And what the Bible is showing us men is that we are going to fall short. We are going to make mistakes. I pray none of you takes a life. But some of you listening to this have committed adultery. You've cheated on your spouse. There's forgiveness for you. The Bible shows us that. This isn't an out to commit sin. This is the grace to continue to live the life that God has called you to when you step off the tracks and go down the off the rails and make your own decision. By aligning our thoughts, our actions with God's word, we are able to make better decisions in our life. And when we don't make the right decision, we turn back to God's word. We beg of God for forgiveness. We trust that he gives that to us. He pours out an ending grace upon us, and then we can go continue to live the life that God calls us to. That doesn't mean that we're not going to face consequences. You commit adultery, your wife may leave. You take a life, you're going to end up in jail. But that doesn't mean you can't be forgiven. That doesn't mean you cannot continue to live as the man God calls you to. Where did I get all this? Where, where did I get all of this information? How do I know? How, how can I be so sure? Because that's what the word of God tells me. If we want wisdom, if we want to be men of wisdom, if we want to be incredibly successful and perform at high levels, we must be guided by something greater than human effort than human idea. The word of God is where true greatness is found. The Bible helps us to make every decision. It helps to process thought. It helps us to navigate this life of chaos and struggle and heartache and tragedy and everything else that is warring against us right now. Not easy. And in many ways, it doesn't feel very friendly. What are we gonna do? Man says to fight harder, push through. And, and there, is some, there, there is some good advice there. But God says, rest in me. Come to me, all who are burdened. 
and I will give you rest, Jesus says. Lean in. Rest in God. I think one of the most beautiful things about the Word of God is it's going to help me think about everything I need to know in this world. And that's what I'm after. I need to understand how to navigate. I need to understand how to be. It's so confusing. Am I supposed to be aggressive in this situation? Am I supposed to get after it? Am I supposed to fight back physically? Am I supposed to retreat? Am I supposed to pray, meditate, let it go? What happens when I see these atrocities in the world? Oh, I do. What do you do? What job do you take? How do you discipline your children? How do you spend your money? How do you take care of your wife? How do you love others that you just want to punch in the face? Nose deep in the word of God. That's how. Be consumed with God's word. I want to land the plane by sharing a couple of practical applications with you that I think will be helpful for you. We consider this topic. Because if you remember, I opened up by asking you this question. Have you ever felt overwhelmed by living the life that you're called to live today? I know the answer. I talk to so many guys every single day and they're overwhelmed. And I am too. I am so overwhelmed so often right now, right now in this moment, as I record this podcast, which is about a week before it's going to go live. I am overwhelmed. Yesterday, I had had it. I was under such heavy attacks, such negativity, so much untruth being thrown at me. I was just over it. And I rarely have the capacity. I had very little capacity to do anything about it. I got home. I was eating dinner. I was so quiet. My wife could tell that, that I was struggling and she was concerned for me. And there was just really nothing I could do. And it didn't really go away. But I woke up this morning and I just remembered I didn't remember where it was from. So trust me, I'm not this like perfect biblical scholar. I ended up later realizing it's the book of Lamentations. But I just remembered that one time I had read, many times I've read in the Bible, that God's mercies are new every morning. And I, I needed that this morning. I needed that not just to reset from yesterday, but I needed to know that God's mercies were new every morning because I had no idea that I was going to come get it worse today than I got it yesterday. It was freaking hard. As men, we have a lot of responsibility. So let me help you by offering a little bit of practical advice as we close this thing down. Number one, here are a couple of techniques for reflection and critical thinking based on biblical principles. One of the best things that you can do if you want to gain more biblical wisdom so you can understand how to think, not just what to think, I would encourage you to pray on Scripture, meditate on Scripture, and journal on Scripture. Why, why did I emphasize the on Scripture? Because we can pray. And I believe there is incredible benefit to it. I believe that it is biblical to pray, but sometimes our prayer, I mean, everything can because of the human mind, but sometimes our prayers can be clouded by the, by the chaos in our head. But when I'm reading God's word on a piece of paper or on my Bible app on a phone or a whatever, that can't be twisted. I mean, people try to twist it, but the words are the words. And so I like reading and praying about what I'm reading. I like journaling, writing down what I am reading. What's this mean to me? What God is trying, what is God trying to say to me? What can I take away from it? And sometimes I'll even say, what don't I like about it? What bothers me about what I'm reading? Practices like that, particularly like every single morning I wake up and I read my Bible, typically a chapter, sometimes a section, but usually a chapter a day. And I do that before I check any notifications. So no social media, no email, no nothing before I read my Bible. And it just sets a tone. And what's so surprising, though it should not be at all, is I read scripture and sometime throughout that day, I'm faced with an opportunity to exercise what I learned. Even today, I, this morning I was reading Ephesians 5, Wives, submit to your husbands. Husbands, 
Um, love your wife as Christ loved the church, literally meaning husbands give up your entire life for your wife. And I would be faced with an opportunity to exercise that wisdom when I got onto a call with somebody that I met online and he and I were talking back and forth and I got to encourage him because of what I read today. God's word is never void. And so reading your Bible every single day will encourage, it will inform, it will help to guide you in the decisions that you're making. It will help you at work. It will help you at home. It will help you with your friends. It will help you in the gym. It will help you with every single thing you do. Pray on it, meditate on it, write about it, read it, consume it, consume it, and consume it again. Specific daily practices that I would encourage. So I said like, you know, to pray, meditate, and journal. I think those are super helpful. And I would say, do it every day. I just shared with you what I do every single day. There's been times when I've read through devotionals. There's one called Daily Strength. I'll link it down at the bottom of this and uh, you can check it out. That's actually a men's devotional that goes through the word of God uh, and also applies to scripture. As a matter of fact, the first person to DM me on any platform that you listen to or watch this on that says you want a copy of that, I will personally send you a copy. It's a pretty dope, thick, hardback. I also have the Kindle version, but I'll send you a hardback, a first person that DMs me and wants that. So read your Bible every single morning. Take a moment to pray. Two minutes, three minutes. Ask God to speak to your heart about what you've just read. And then finally, just one more kind of just like way that this practically applies. And I've talked about this many times, but one more thing is, you know, as you, as you apply biblical wisdom to modern day challenges, you are going to be faced with more modern day challenges. You're going to be faced with more conflict at work. You're going to struggle to balance career and family. You're going to struggle with stress and anxiety. You know, it's just like the enemy, Satan himself is just hovering. And he's waiting for me to build up the slightest sliver of confidence that I'm doing the right thing and I'm on the right track. And he's like, all right, I'm on it. I am in the spiritual battle of my life in this moment, right now, literally this moment, the last couple of months. I'm telling you right now, there are moments when I feel like I'm being eaten alive. And the only thing, no, there are a few things. My wife has been incredible support. I've got some friends that are an incredible support. But truly, the only thing that is keeping me afloat is God's word implanted into my heart. It's me reading, it's me praying, it's me studying, it's me sitting in church and applying that back. It's me reading my Bible every single day. It's listening to worship music as they're singing the lyrics of scripture. It's me watching videos of other uh, pastors out there that are sharing uh, from their heart and I'm applying those things or seeing how to apply those things to my life. Jesus says, in this world, you will have tribulation. As you attempt to apply biblical wisdom you are going to face more challenge. It's coming. I hope you're in a good season right now. But whether you are or not, more is coming. We have an opportunity, you guys, to look at this world through one of two lenses. We have an opportunity to look through the lens of this world. We have an opportunity to see things as everybody else sees them. And I don't know about you, but when I assess the way that people are seeing this world right now, I don't want to see the world this way. I don't want to see dehumanization. I don't want to see destruction. I don't want to see hatred. I don't want to see evil. And so instead, by God's grace and him saving me 18 years ago, I'm able to look at this world through the lens of scripture to see why we're falling short in the ways that we are, why I am falling short in the ways that I are, I am, in learning how to deal with those in a much better manner. So just to recap, the Bible is relevant today. It is important to learn how to think, not just what to think, and we must practically apply biblical wisdom to our everyday life. This is what it means to be a man leveraging the biblical wisdom available to us to succeed in the modern world that we're in. In upcoming episodes, we're gonna talk about leadership, resilience, decision-making from a faith-based perspective. And I want you to subscribe, to like, wherever you're watching this platform, I appreciate it all.
But I'd also love to invite you into this conversation, whether it's a comment on one of the social platforms, you want to email ryan at ryanjamesmiller.com, I will take your feedback directly. I want to hear from you. When it comes to, especially as a man, living the life that you're called to live right now, what are the things that you face challenges with, and how have you leveraged scripture, biblical wisdom, to overcome those, or to face those, or maybe... You don't know how to do that, and you're struggling, and you would love some guidance. I'm going to eventually point you to Scripture, but I would love to support you in any way I can. Thank you so much, guys, for checking out this first episode of The Modern Man's Guide to Biblical Wisdom. This, again, is the Unlocking Greatness podcast. I'm Ryan James Miller. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you more than you know. Peace.